Eric. Oh, I can move your slides okay, for you, Rachel. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm Rachel Thomas. I'm a machine learning researcher at FAST.ai and the University of San Francisco Data Institute. Um, I want to warn you, I'm not a medical professional. Um, I've worked as a software engineer and a data scientist. My PhD is in math. Um, and I want to share some lessons and warnings, uh, I think, from the tech industry around bias. Um, and I'm really hoping that this can start a conversation that I um, kind of how this applies to medicine and um, kind of what we can do to avoid some of these pitfalls. Uh, clicker's ready not for the next, next slide, please. <laughs> next slide. <laughs> um, so there uh, have already been some um, kind of examples of bias in artificial intelligence that range from offensive to tragic. Uh, this is a photo from a Nokia camera. Um, there's a photo of an Asian woman, and it's asking if she was blinking, and she is not blinking. Um, this uh, next diagram is from um, Google has a natural language library called word to vec which is a really useful resource and is being used in a lot of other um, natural language processing tools right now. Um, and something that it does is it lets, um, or it's kind of uh, has discovered analogies. Um, and so here it's saying man is to woman as king is to queen, which is great. It also produces analogies, though, like man is to computer programmer, like woman is to homemaker, which is sexist um, and offensive. Uh, this next picture is also from Google. It uh, will automatically group your photos together. This is Google Photos and provide labels. And it has labeled a photo of two black people as gorillas, um, so very offensive. Um, and I just want to kind of pause and say with um, these two photo-based examples, um, presumably the, you know, this was not the intent of the companies that produced this software, but they probably used training sets that were mostly pictures of white people um, and weren't, weren't prepared to um, look at pictures of people of color. Um, and then down uh, at the bottom is a chart. This is the, I think, saddest and most horrifying example of bias that I've seen so far. Um, there's software used in courtrooms across the United States to predict if a defendant will commit another crime. And this is used by judges to make parole decisions and sometimes also sentencing decisions. Um, and the makers of the software had published their overall error rate. Uh, ProPublica did an investigative report and discovered that the error rate was drastically different between white and black Americans. And so the false positive rate for black defendants is 45% of it labels them high risk and they never commit another crime. Whereas for white defendants, it was only 23%. And then that's flipped. Oh, sorry, go back. I'm still on the diagram. Um, that number was flipped uh, for false negatives. So for 48% of white defendants, it thought they're low risk and then they do commit another crime. Um, and it was 28% for black Americans. So that's, um, yeah, has really impacted people's lives that this was used in courtrooms and has this very strong racial bias of what direction the errors are in. Um, so before you say though, oh no, AI is uh, kind of dangerous, you know, that it's doing things like this, humans are really biased as well. Um, so this is a picture from something called um, an implicit association test. Um, if you've never taken one, I encourage you to try it. You can Google for implicit association test. It's by Harvard's uh, Project Implicit. And there are a lot of variations. So this one is from gender and career, but they also have ones around skin color, um, Arab names, obesity, ageism, um, a lot of different topics. And so here, it's kind of like a game. Um, you push a button on the left side of your keyboard when a word comes up that's related, that's either a ma um, male name, so Benjamin or James, or related to family, so marriage or children. And then push a button on the right side of your keyboard for a female name, like Jennifer, or a word related to career, such as professional or salary. And then there are different rounds, and they switch up what's on the left and right and how they're paired. Um, and so here, you would click the right button because professional relates to career. Um, so I just want to say I, um, I took this test again yesterday to check, and I'm someone who cares very deeply about my own career, but also about um, 
the access of women to career opportunities. I've personally taught and mentored over 100 women who were changing careers to become software engineers. I've written articles on unconscious bias and on the obstacles women face in the tech industry in their careers. And I'm still biased. Um, and, I, and I can also, I can tell as I'm taking it, like it feels less natural to me. Um, and you're, you're trying to do this as quickly as possible. Um, and so I just say that to say that um, unconscious or implicit biases, uh, we're, you know, we're typically not aware of them and they, they're not in line with our values. Um, so it doesn't mean, like I certainly don't intend to have this bias, um, but I do. And so, yeah, a few more points. So that's, a, that's kind of one class of studies. Um, there's a second class of studies where, um, one that I particularly like is uh, researchers at Harvard, MIT Sloan and Wharton um, had men and women read different investment pitches of ideas and listeners rated them. And the pitches narrated by male voices were rated as more logical, more persuasive um, than the identical pitch read by a woman's voice. So it's the same idea and even the same words and it's perceived differently. Um, and there's kind of a whole class of studies like that. Uh, they've had men and women read salary negotiation scripts and a woman will be perceived as less likable or less pleasant to work with uh, whereas the man won't be perceived that way for reading the same script. Um, they've sent out resumes and it's the same resume and they change the name between either a traditionally white name or a traditionally African American name and they get a lot more callbacks with the white names on the resume. So next slide. So now bias in medicine. So there's a lot of research around um, patients, uh, people of color receiving um, worse quality medical care than white patients. And again, this is not something that doctors intend to do or are doing consciously, uh, but they are offering less, um, less pain medication to black patients, um, and in some cases, women. They're also um, offering less uh, helpful interventions <coughs> to black patients. Um, I think the one intervention that black patients receive more than white patients is amputation. Um, and so, and then there are also, um, I read some studies that are very interesting on just even um, kind of these small things in interactions that the body language of a physician is often more closed when talking to a patient of a different race than the physician, um, whereas it's kind of more warm and open when talking to a patient of the same race. Um, so these are uh, kind of the human biases that are there. And I would, I would love to hear uh, kind of your thoughts on other ways that this can play out, um, again, unintentionally in medicine. Um, next slide. So we, um, I think as, as AI is being implemented more widely in medicine and will continue to be so, um, we have, there's some real risk that we could codify, codify the existing biases. We could even add new biases from our algorithms. Um, but it's also a huge opportunity that we could try to create systems that are less biased than humans um, and provide higher quality care to everyone. A few tips to keep in mind, and I certainly don't have the solution to this, is that biased input will lead to biased output. Um, so if your algorithm is not gonna be better than the data you train it with, um, that's one thing to keep in mind. You also, um, as the example of the software for pr uh, predicting criminal recidivism, you definitely wanna check your error rates on different subgroups. Um, that's a really important metric. Um, a lot of the examples I gave today related to race or gender, but there are plenty of other um, factors that can impact people's quality of care, such as age, history, obesity, socioeconomic status. Um, I'm sure you can think of more. So kind of making sure that patients from a particular group aren't receiving different care um, or different from what they need. Next point, please. Um, and then this is, this is a really tricky one, and this is uh, an issue kind of across machine learning, um, not just in medicine, but your algorithm will be less accurate for cases that aren't well represented in your training data, but it's hard to know how your data is unrepresentative because um, obviously we're, we're always doing our best with the data that we use. And I think the best way to try to get at this is to um, really look at the cases that you are getting wrong, to see if there are patterns there, if you can understand kind of what's happening. Um, and you typically do have to do multiple iterations as you're building a system. And so, yeah, those are uh, 
kind of some thoughts on approaching bias in AI, and I hope, uh, yeah, I hope during the discussion to kind of hear your thoughts on it. Well, great. I mean, what a great topic and very timely. So, you and Ronan are in the forefront of getting AI into medicine. Um, how do we avoid or how do we mitigate these biases? Can AI actually help? You know, when we type, we, we are misspelling a word, it autocorrects, right? So, mm -hmm. is there a possibility of that with AI? And also, is there some inherent danger in having such a autocorrection? Oh, def so definitely to both. Yeah, there's definitely the possibility. I think that it can um, help us be better and help us live up to the values that we have um, and that it could also make us worse with these autocorrection. Um, the, yeah, I think the, the steps that I listed are great starting points of really being sure to look at your error rates, to look at the type of data. Um, another one that I didn't have on here is to have more diverse teams building these systems. Um, the tech community has really suffered from being a pretty homogeneous um, community. So that's a starting place. Um, to, I think to even kind of try to be thinking about what can go wrong as you're building the system and not wait till afterwards when the disaster happens. Stephen, you had a question? Not a question, just a comment. I want to thank, thank Rachel for bringing this up because I must say in, in my, you know, newness to the topic, it never occurred to me to ask the question you're asking, which is does AI have the potential to worsen, foster, or, or reduce inherent biases in medicine, which is the field that I'm interested in. So I just wanted to say, I've got to think a lot more about that, and I really appreciate the comments. It's on multiple levels, right? I mean, it's biases in medicine. It's our um, racial biases, our um, being sexist, and all those things. So one thing that's important in terms of edu educating the next generation into this area, what's happening with women in the tech world? Because it's been up and down in terms of interest and and uh, is what's the latest that's happening? Um, it's uh, it's somewhat discouraging in that the really the numbers are not moving at a lot of companies. Um, I think a lot of good conversations are happening. A lot of good work is being written. There are some I think smaller companies that are um, doing well and making strides at this, um, but it. I think it can be very hard once your culture gets very entrenched, and that's why I think it's particularly important right now. We're kind of at the you know the cusp of like this beginning of AI and medicine. Um, it is really important to try to be inclusive and equitable from the start. Um, as a data scientist in 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 the in this world, do you see inherent differences between men and women in terms of working as a data scientist and and a product also? Oh, in products. Um, because there's so much individuality in your, in your coding. Do you see inherent differences that may be important for the future to have both aspects? It's, um, and it's really hard for me to separate this out from socialization or from culture. Um, so I don't want to um, kind of make any statements about like this is innate to, to men or women. Um, but I think that definitely kind of how um, company culture is can be more, uh, more uh, amenable to certain types. I worked at a company with a super aggressive culture about how things were decided and they had a, their ideal was like, you know, you fight for the best idea to win. And there's, uh, there were a lot of men who were like, I'm an introvert and this doesn't appeal to me and my ideas don't get heard as well. But I think that was particularly hard for, for women um, kind of to even get your idea heard. Um, you bring up the kind of mentioning products. A lot of people have cited examples of, you know, Apple Health launch, launching without a menstrual tracker or different features that were, you know, if more women on the, were on the team, would this have been included? Um, so I think, yeah, it's definitely an issue. Yeah. All right, Stephen.